So uh, this is um, we have three mapping techniques for cache memories. The first is the direct mapping technique. So let's see what is the direct mapping technique. So here we are assuming certain things. So the first thing we are assuming is that uh, we have a main memory and one cache memory. In main memory, we have 4096 blocks of data. Okay. So we have 0 to 4095. That is total of 4096 blocks of data. And in cache memory, we have 128 blocks of data. That is block 0 to block 127. We have a total of 128 blocks of data. So for all these three techniques, we are going to assume the same. So 4096 blocks of data in main memory and four, uh, 128 blocks of data in the cache. Now another assumption is that in each of these block of data, we have 16 words. 16 words of data. Okay. So 16 words are stored in each block. In either of the block, in the cache or in the um, main memory, all the blocks contain 16 words. Okay. So these are some of the assumptions. So in direct mapping, what happens is that we are assuming that a block J, see here, a block J of the main memory, block J of the main memory is mapped onto block J modulo 128 of the cache memory. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that block 0 of the main memory is mapped on to block 0 of the cache. The next block that is mapped on to the block 0 of the cache is block 128 because it was modulo 128. Block J modulo 128. So 0, 128, then multiples of 128. That is next is 256. 256 is also mapped on to the block 0 of the cache. Then 256 plus 128. So that will go on up to 4095. Okay, so so many blocks of data are mapped onto a single block in the cache, which is block 0. Similarly, block 1 of the main memory is mapped onto block 1 of the cache. So after 128, what is uh, the next block? It is 129. So 129 is uh, mapped onto block 1. After 256, next is 257. So 257 is also mapped on to block 1 of the cache. So likewise, each block of the main memory, uh, or we can say that multiple blocks of the main memory are mapped on to a single block in the cache. So it does not stop at 257. It is again 257 plus 128 like that. Okay. So that will go on up to 4095. So we need to, uh, so what are we doing? We are mapping multiple blocks of the main memory to a single block in the cache. So uh, we have an address for the main memory, but uh, we have another address for the cache memory also. So uh, why are we using the cache memory? We are using the cache memory so that uh, the access time, the access time for the processor is reduced. So if you want to, if the processor wants to uh, access uh, some data from the main memory, it will take a longer time than it will take for the uh, processor to access the cache. Because mostly you have two types of cache. One cache is inside the processor itself. So that will take very less time to access. Okay, so uh, suppose you have a set of instructions. Suppose we are going to store instructions in the cache. Okay, you can store instructions as well as 
data inside the cache so suppose you are going to store instructions inside a cache suppose you, you have a set of instructions in a loop so a loop will contain say 10 instructions so you want to uh, say uh, process these 10 uh, instructions continuously for say uh, 200 times so if you are keeping these 10 instructions in the main memory each time these mem uh, instructions should be brought into the processor it should be uh, executed again brought in 200 times uh, these 10 instructions should be brought in to the processor from the main memory so that will take a lot of time so what you will do instead these 10 instructions can be placed somewhere inside the cache so that very less time is taken to execute this when compared to when it is in the main memory so that is the reason why we are using the cache so uh, the problem is we have 4096 blocks and you can move only block block wise okay you cannot move a particular word uh, to the uh, cache uh, we are assuming that we are moving it as a a block only a block of 16 words okay so we need we know the memory address main memory address but we don't know the cache address like uh, block 0 can be moved to block 0 block 128 is moved to block 0 uh, 256 is moved to block 0 so we don't know which block of data of the main memory is now present in block 0 of the cache so such inf for such information you have a cache address you have an address okay main memory address for the cache so what are the details we have in in that um, address so here you have 5 plus 7 plus 4 uh, that is 12 plus 4 16 uh, is the length of that address okay so the lower order four bits the, these are the bits these numbers are bits so you have four word four bits to um, tell you which is the word we are addressing okay and seven is the number of bits uh, you require to know which is the block you are addressing and uh, five is the number of bits to um, identify the tag okay so how do you uh, know how much bits are required uh, for word block and tag so word is easy you, we know that you have 16 uh, words in a block so 16 is 2 raised to 4 so 4 bits to represent the word so one of the 16 words that can be represented as two in four bits 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1 1 1 1 means 16 words can be addressed using the four bits then block block is seven bits we know that in the cache you have 128 blocks so 128 blocks means 128 is 2 raised to 7 is 128 2 raised to 7 is 128 so that is why the 7 will represent the block okay and tag tag is see you have 4096 uh, blocks in the main memory and 128 blocks in the cache so 4096 blocks is mapped on to 128 uh, blocks you have 128 blocks so 4096 blocks are divided uh, among 128 blocks so in order to you have a tag for each block so how many bits to represent this uh, tag that will be 4096 divided by 128 that will be 32 and 2 raised to 5 is 32 4096 divided by 128 why because 4096 blocks are divided among 
128 blocks. So 4096 divided by 128 is 32 and 2 raised to 5 is 32. So you have 5 bits for the tag. So that is direct mapping. So uh, if you see the uh, address with the uh, 5 bits in the up higher order 5 bits, you know what is the tag. So you can go to that particular tag in the cache and then you have uh, the block number using the 7 bits and in that block you know the word by the last 4 bits. So that is the direct mapping. Next is associative mapping. So the difference between uh, associative mapping and direct mapping is that in direct mapping multiple blocks of the main memory is mapped onto a single block in the cache. So it cannot go to some other location that is block 0 of block 0, block 128, block 256. These blocks can go only to block 0 of the cache in the case of direct mapping in our example. But in the case of associative mapping, any block in the main memory can go to any block in the cache. Only uh, requirement is that it should be free. Okay. So, in the case of direct mapping, uh, say block 0 has some uh, value, say uh, it has a block already present. And you want to move another block to that block 0. Uh, suppose block 0 of the main memory is already there in block 0 of the cache. You want to move block 128 to block 0 of the cache. So what happens? The already existing block 0 should be overwritten with the block 128. Okay, You cannot have uh, two blocks at the same time inside the uh, cache in the same location. Okay, so one should be overwritten. But in the case of associative mapping, if block 0 is already there, block 128 can be written some in some other block. Okay, there is no uh, space restriction like um, it should be written here only. There is nothing like that. You can uh, move it to any other position in the cache where it is free. Okay, so that is associative mapping so in associative mapping the addresses like this tag is 12 bits and word is 4 bits so word is similar to the earlier case you have 16 words so 2 raised to 4 is 16 so 4 bits for that uh, tag is 12 bits why because 4096 can be mapped down to anywhere in uh, 127 uh, sorry 128 blocks in the cache so 4096 is 2 raised to 12 so that 12 will come to this tag now the last method is set associative mapping so in set associative mapping you have set okay so the blocks in the cache is divided into set. So in this particular case, we have in a particular set, you have two blocks. Okay. So uh, in the first case, in the direct mapped uh, cache, uh, the blocks in the main memory is mapped onto a block in the cache. In the case of set associative, a block in the uh, main memory is mapped on to a set in the cache. Okay, so a particular block should be in that set. That is certain, but there is no um, rule that it should be in a particular block. So here set 0 means block 0 and block 1. So if you move uh, block 0 to set 0, it can be either in block 0 or in block 1. Okay, wherever it is free, it will be moved to that particular location. So, in this case, 4096 
blocks in the main memory that is mapped on to 64 set by 64 128 blocks 128 blocks in that two blocks in one set so 128 divided by 2 is 64 so 64 set so that is 0 to 63 okay so 4096 uh, blocks is mapped on to 64 set so 4096 divided by 64 is 64 itself and 64 we know as 2 raised to 6 so 6 bits so 6 bits for the set and again you have 64 um, um, Uh, sorry, tag is 4096 divided by uh, 64. That's why tag is 6. Set, you have six, uh, 64 sets and 64 is 2 raised to uh, 6. So, tag and set both are 6 bits long and word is 4 bits long. Why? Because there are 16 words. Next is we'll see what are the different uh, types of cash. So, here you can see uh, L1 cash and you have the L2 cash. Okay. So, um, if you are talking about uh, the size of these memories, you can say that main memory has the largest size next comes the l2 cache and next is the l1 cache so the smallest is the l1 cache uh, largest is the main memory and middle one is the uh, l2 cache and uh, distance from the processor l1 cache is nearer to the processor l2 cache is more far further from the processor and main memory is the farthest Okay, uh, and uh, uh, the access time, access time, main memory uh, to the processor. The processor accessing the main memory takes the largest time. Next comes the uh, L2 cache and the least time taken to access uh, a memory is the processor accessing the L1 cache. And L1 cache, you have two types. You have the instruction cache and the uh, data cache. So, instruction cache will contain only the instructions and data cache will store only the data. But in the case of L2 cache, it can store both the data as well as the instruction. That's why it is larger in size when compared to L1 cache. Next, you have the hit and miss. So, we know that what is hit? Hit is uh, if you are looking for, if the processor is looking for a particular block of data uh, anywhere, um, say in the cache and if that is present in the cache, then it is a hit. If the block of data the processor is looking for is not there in the cache, then it is a miss. So, it can be a read hit, write hit, that is, you are going to read from the cache, then it's a read hit uh, or a read miss if it's not there in the cache. And write hit or write miss depending on whether you are going to write uh, on the block of data. Okay, so hit rate. What is hit rate? Hit rate is uh, number of hits divided by the total number of access okay number of times you are trying to read suppose okay uh, that is the denominator and uh, numerator numerator is the uh, number of hits while trying to read it and misses uh, miss penalty uh, sorry miss rate is, uh, is the uh, total number of misses divided by the total number of access that is um, miss rate 
and miss penalty is see if that particular block of data is not there uh, in the cache then it should be brought into the cache from the main memory so it will take an extra time to bring that data from the main memory to the cache that extra time is called the miss penalty so that is the miss penalty that extra time to uh, bring the desired information then you have the hit rate and the miss rate so if uh, hit rate is represented as say h this h is the hit rate and hit rate means what it is there in the cache so if it's there in the cache then it will take a particular time to access the cache that is c c is the time to access the cache it is already there so uh, it is a hit so h h if it's a hit then the time to access the cache so h into c that is the time in the case of average time to access the cache in the case of a uh, hit plus 1 minus h h is hit means 1 minus h is the miss okay miss rate so 1 minus h is the miss rate and m is the miss penalty that is the extra time to bring the data uh, onto the cache so this is the average access time experienced by the processor so next is the uh, virtual memory 